Hi, my name is Mike. I am from digitaloffensive.com, uh, which is my small personal blog where I go through different security topics uh, or different interests that I currently have. Um, I want to put together a video series around my path to OSCP. I know many people have done this. Uh, why another one, right? I find a lot of value in the ones I have watched where they've done a lot of work. Uh, they put a lot of effort into it. They give it a lot of great hints, uh, tips without basically violating um, the OSCP's uh, integrity. So I have taken the OSCP once already. Uh, a few months back, I went through the process. Uh, I did the 90 day lab, the small extension. So I still had some time to practice between uh, the lab time and my actual test time. Uh, something to think about when you do schedule your test is to schedule ahead of time. Uh, they do book up fast, so key time frames will fill in and you will not get the time slots you want or you'll have to wait a little bit longer to get them. Uh, personally, I was looking for a Friday morning, basically take off uh, all day of work from Friday, uh, go to bed normal time uh, the night before, wake up on Friday, crank it out all day Friday um, into Saturday, um, wrap it up on Saturday, take some, take a nap, and then spend my Sunday uh, writing the report and get everything submitted so I wouldn't miss too much work. Um, whatever works for you. I've also seen people take off a month at a time uh, or longer from their jobs to work on this. Personally, my first time around, I was spending, uh, I'd say anywhere between two to four hours a night uh, working on the labs, uh, going through the material, and uh, compromising machines. Some other tips that um, I noticed in my first round that I'm going to do a little bit differently now in my second round is uh, avoid the forums. The forums are great. You get stuck. It's nice to go there. There's a lot of tips and hints and things you're going to learn in those forums. Problem is, it makes you dependent on the forums. I find so many people in there that haven't gone through the material or really don't have the full understanding of what they're doing going there for a quick answer um now don't get me wrong if you get stuck and you're pounding your head against that wall for days jump in there um search through them see if you can find that little tidbit of information and all the cryptic talk that's in there to jog your memory or to put you on the right path of thinking <clears throat> um but other than that, don't spend large time, large amounts of time in the forum. Um, I, I find that will take away from some of your, um, some of the adventure of going through the certification. Uh, the second thing I would mention is make sure you read the manual and go through the videos before jumping into the labs. I have really bad OCD or attention de deficit disorder or something, whatever you want to call it. Um, Definitely not diagnosed, but I like to get my hands right in and get dirty, right? Basically, I sat there and went through some of the videos. I'm like, all right, all right, let me jump in the labs and see what I can do. Of course, you're compromising machines left and right in the labs, depending on your skill set. You're getting through things like, oh, man, why do I need to go through this? Well, the whole value add is having that material and following along with that material to really get the understanding of the process, the methodology. Uh, there's definitely parts in the material that's going to help you greatly as you go through the labs. It's going to be very helpful for you, and you're going to learn a lot. Um, I, along the same lines of that, as you're going through the material, there's going to be exercises you're going to need to do. Those exercises that you're going to do, make sure you're documenting them right away. Don't wait until the end. If you're getting to day 30, day 90, whatever amount of time you bore for the labs, and you're waiting for that day to crank out all your lab assignments so you can get those additional five points, if they're even worth five points anymore, um, you're not going to get through it. Uh, there's just too much information uh, in there to try to cram into one night. Uh, that writing the final report is actually easier, I think, in my opinion, than writing your lab report. Because not only are you doing your lab exercises in your report, you're also documenting all your compromises for, I believe whatever the current number is, you can go to the official website and see how many they require you to document in, in your current lab reports. But all that stuff needs to be documented with the same type of level that you're going to give into your final report so you can get those uh, extra few points. 
Now, when I first started, uh, it was worth 10 points, I believe, through my progress. Uh, they dropped it down to five points total, uh, which kind of makes you really wonder is it worth the points. Um, I will tell you from experience, I missed the final one probably by about 10 points, give or take, that if I had the full labs and things like that, uh, it may or may not help me pass it. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, just based on strict counting and how they work things out, uh, I estimate about 10 points. Um, you can get a better understanding once you sign up of what the points are based on, uh, how assets are assigned, things like that. I'm not going to give that information out. Um, make sure that when you do sign up, that you read their rules. Um, they have a uh, code of ethics. They have uh, 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 basically uh, how-to guides. Uh, basically, anything you need to know, they have documentation on it. And their documentation updates. Uh, during my three months in there, I would say there was probably three or four major updates made to the documentation. Uh, some around what tools you can use, some around what points. And it is definitely something you need to take into consideration because there is no teacher there uh, reminding you what you can and can't do. Once you get to that final exam, you make a mistake, you do something that you're not supposed to do, it's over. Uh, so make sure you're not one of those people. Uh, as far as signing up, I would say uh, if you're going to sign up for the uh, OSCP, make sure that you <clears throat> you buy the amount of lab time up front that you think you're going to need. And the reason I say that is it's cheaper to buy the most amount long run than it is to buy it in small increments. If you buy the full 90 days at the time I bought it, it was, I want to say around $1,800, give or take. Uh, maybe a little bit less, I, I don't know, uh, $1,200 I think. What, whatever it was, the amount, if you go to renew, is uh, a little bit higher than what it would have been to just buy it. So um, it, it's worth buying the full 90 days. If, if you think you're gonna need 30 days only to get through everything, then buy yourself 60 days. Have that extra time to go back and play in there if you're, you're able to ace it right away. If you think it's gonna take 60, get the 90. Um, a lot of people don't plan properly or life events come up. You have a kids, you have children, you have a, a, a wife, a family, a job. All that stuff takes away from the time you're going to be able to spend in those labs. And then there's going to be some days where you just don't want to be in the labs. You're going to want to take a break and walk away from this. Let your mind clear. Um, so with that being said, uh, with my current path going forward, I am starting off with some uh, non-OSP based uh, virtual machines um, found on Volnhub and a few other sites. Um, I did find this awesome article on uh, different OS, uh, OS, OSCP training VMs uh, hosted, uh, um, that are hosted on Volnhub, but here it gives you direct links right to them. So they have 10 directly linked right here. Um, the first two got through them pretty easy. Actually, sorry, the first one I got through pretty easy. Um, I haven't tried first leaks yet. I'm actually working on stapler uh, right now and I'll actually have my second video as that video about how to go from boot to root uh, using stapler. What I like about stapler is it was released by, uh, I believe he pronounced his name, Got Milk. Uh, for those who are in the OSCP or those that sign up for the OSCP uh, or just those in security, that name should sound familiar. Uh, he's all over the forums. He has a lot of great information on GitHub. Um, he's one of the uh, people that have gone through the OSCP without using any automated uh, tools such as Metasploit. Um, basically, a lot of uh, great information out on the internet uh, released by him. So I decided to try, uh, I'm going to try to go through his uh, VM and see what type of uh, uh, what type of uh, attacks and uh, information I can learn through going uh, trying to exploit that VM and get through that. Once I get through all these, um, I do have a uh, advanced pen tech advanced pen test class coming up. Uh, I got had some credits that I got uh, awarded to one of Joe McCray's uh, training sessions. Um, 
I tried doing his intro to pen testing class. I, I'm a little too far advanced for that class. It was not very useful to me. Uh, the class was constantly getting rescheduled, so I dropped the class. They gave me some credit uh, to try to get me to come back, so I'm signing up for his advanced class. See if that's any uh, any better, any any more interest to really give them a second view, uh, a second shot at uh, earning some business from me. Uh, so I will post about that as well as I go through that class. That class is scheduled for the week of February 5th, I believe it is. So we'll see. But once I get all settled down, I'm thinking around maybe the end of February, first week of March, I'm going to sign up for another 90 days in OCP Labs. And get my butt moving again. Uh, my goal this year is to get the OSCP. I don't want to keep saying I'm a candidate. I don't want to say I haven't got through yet. I want to be able to put that on my resume and put that to work for me. Uh, while it hasn't been a requirement in my uh, current roles as a tester or doing security uh, assessments, I think it's definitely a building block for uh, bigger and better positions out there. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not making good money at my current positions, but there's always room for uh, growth. Uh, and with that growth, usually comes more responsibilities and more exciting projects that you can dig into. So if you're interested in anything I've said, feel free to follow me. Uh, click on the subscribe button. I'm going to try to start getting videos up. Uh, it's been something that's been near and dear to my heart to try to do for a while now, and it's just been super busy. So um, let's see where this goes. If you have any questions, put the comments below or reach out to me directly. Thanks, and have a good one.